Welcome to Anatomy and Physiology at Glen Oaks Community College. I'm Dr. Ren Hartung. And the video that I just did went over basically the parts of a neuron and their physiology. And we talked about on the dendrites and the soma or the cell body, how local potentials happen. And then we talked about how an axon, how signals travel down an axon called action potentials. And we talked about how they travel without myelin and how they travel with myelination. Now I'd like to talk about, on the cell membrane level and the proteins involved, how do we maintain resting potential in the neuron? And how does an action potential move along the neuron? So what I've done is redrawn my myelinated axon. And all I really want to look at is this one little section of the membrane. So I'm going to have that blown up down here so that I can talk about the proteins along that membrane. To represent that membrane, I'm just going to put a line across here. And my apologies to anybody who knows and cares about the structure of the proteins. Good knowledge, great to have, but it's kind of detailed. I'm going to represent my proteins as either um, little doors or as just a dot like this. The first thing I'm going to talk about are proteins that help to maintain resting potential. And there's two proteins that help to maintain resting potential. One of them you've dealt with in biology. We dealt with it earlier in this semester. It's called the sodium potassium whoops, potassium pump. Or to do it in shorthand, remember that sodium is Na plus and potassium is K plus. You can say Na whoops, K pump. That's the shorthand for it. So this is my sodium potassium pump, and let's remember exactly what it does. It pumps three sodiums out of the cell, and it pumps two potassiums in. And in doing so, it takes an ATP and breaks it into ADP, adenosine diphosphate, and a phosphate group. So it's using the energy of ATP to pump out three sodium ions and to pump in two potassium ions. Notice right now, even without any other proteins coming into play in the membrane, we've already created at least a little bit of a charge change across the membrane because we're pumping out three positive charges while we're only pumping in two positive charges. So automatically, this area out here is going to be at least one unit more positive than this area in here. The second protein involved with maintaining resting potential, so these are the proteins of resting potential, sorry for my organization or lack thereof. Um, that one was the sodium potassium pump. And number two, this protein is called the potassium, and I'll just write it as K plus, leak channel. For the students in my class right now, your textbook doesn't really talk about the leak channels. What it talks about is that the cell membrane of the neuron in all cells is more permeable to potassium. It allows potassium to cross more readily. The reason the membrane is more permeable to potassium is because there are these channels, these ion channels that are in the membrane that are open all the time and they are selective for potassium. Remember that potassium, because of the sodium potassium pump, potassium is at a higher concentration inside of the cell. This channel does not pump the potassium across, it simply allows the diffusion of potassium out of the cell. So remember the sodium potassium pump 
was pumping out more sodium than it's pumping in potassium. So right there we have a charge difference and that helps to make the inside of the cell more negative and the outside more positive because more positive charges are being pumped out. Now we have some of those positive charges that were pumped in, they're just being allowed to leave. So the cell's membrane becomes even more negative on the inside and positive on the outside. And ultimately what these two together, the sodium potassium pump and the potassium leak channel, what they do is they create resting potential. That resting potential again is around minus 70 millivolts. Those are the proteins of resting potential. And that kind of shows you how we get to resting potential. Now I'm going to move on and we're going to talk about action potentials.